I'm excited because I believe that God is getting ready and is doing, not just getting ready, and he has been doing wonderful and incredible things uh, for this ministry. He is setting us up uh, 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 with a solid foundation. Uh, let me say to all of our leaders who came out on Tuesday, you all made me proud. Can we just thank God for each other? For Amen. Yeah, come on, come on. Let's celebrate each other. That's right. Celebrate each other. That's, yeah, I, I am indeed happy and glad that I know that we have a group of people, first of all, who don't mind being pastored and who don't mind um, um, following vision and leadership. And I'm grateful to the Lord for you. Tonight, I'm going to move pretty quickly because um, many of you all know that T.D. Jakes Conference is here. And um, of course, I am down trying to get as much as I can to help us grow and all of the above. And the gentleman that is, uh, that Pastor Hardy is doing the class on Maxwell is actually teaching tonight. So I want to run down there and, and y'all don't mind me doing that to sharpen my skills. Amen. So, so I, I want to do that. And, and I know y'all hate to get out early. Y'all, that's just going to destroy you all tonight. But, but yeah, that <laughs> but, but I want to run through and I just, I believe what God has given me, I'm not going to finish tonight. I, I pick it up. But what, what the Lord has shared with me and showed me in the scripture is just so powerful that it's going to bless you tonight uh, with, with, in light of all that's happening in the world and in, in, in Baltimore and all the things that are going on. I understand even more how important the church is. Amen. I say I understand how important the church is. I, 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 let me say it one more time. I understand how important the church is. Do anybody understand how important hey, to, to have no hope is devastating to anyone's life? One of the things that keep us going day after day is because we have a hope that's greater than us. That no matter where we are in our lives, we know that God is in the mix and he's going to bring us out on top. We, the Bible says everybody that has this hope in themselves, everybody that has this hope purifies themselves. It, it, it's a hope that you have that God is going to see you through every situation in your life. Is there anybody in here know that there is not one situation that you have in your life that God cannot fix and see you through? That's hope. That's great news. That's incredible news. There's no report that the doctor can give you that you can't take to Jesus and know that he's going to fix it. He can fix it. And you'll be like the Hebrew boys. Even though he may not do it, he's able to do it. And I, I'm grateful. Is there anybody really grateful that you serve a God that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think? That's hope. That's hope. And so I understand that uh, the world need this message. A hopeless world need this message to know that Jesus loves them. And not only that Jesus loves them, but that his grace is sufficient for every situation in your life. So, so we have to continually or we have to start um, really going out and sharing this message, sharing and inviting people so that we can give them hope. Why do you invite people to church? Because they need hope. Why do you get people to come? Because they need to be encouraged. And people that stay home and don't come to church lose hope in life. And so the hope of our lives is Jesus Christ. So, so we want to do that. <coughs> and the Bible teaches us that there's plenty of people, <coughs> excuse me, that are out there that need this message of grace. Go with me real quick to Luke, the 10th chapter. This is very familiar scriptures that you all are familiar with. And I'm going to be reading from the new uh, King James Version. Um, this is good. This is good. Um, look at your neighbor and say, we got to do some work. Our job as the church is not to stay in the four walls of, of this, this room here. 
Uh, we come to get equipped to come out of here to convince somebody that Jesus is the way. So that when people's lives are turned and turmoil and upside down, you ought to be able to give them a message of hope. Amen. Each one of you all are a minister to give a message of hope. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a minister too. You don't need a title by your name to know that God's called you to give somebody a message of hope. You ought to be the beacon light on your job to tell people that let me tell you about a person that can change your situation, no matter what that situation. That's why Christians shouldn't complain to your fellow workers. Because if you don't have hope, how are you going to give somebody else some hope? Amen, somebody? Amen. But listen to what Jesus says. Listen to what Jesus says. Luke 10, uh, 1 through 2, 1 and 2. It says, after these things, y'all have it? Yeah, it ain't on the screen. I'm talking about on the screen. We don't have it on the screen? Yeah. Amen. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and, pl and place where he himself was about to go. Jesus set up, Jesus didn't just didn't go and commit or uh, uh, didn't go do a revival without preparing the people that he was coming. Uh, we're here in Orlando at Kennedy Avenue. We got to let somebody know that we're here. Are y'all listening to me? Jesus is out ministering before there was Facebook and social network, but his Facebook and social network was that he sent people out to tell them that he was coming. Other words, church is not going to happen just by osmosis. It's going to happen because we all make an effort to let people know that Jesus is the answer. Look at your neighbor and say, we all got to make the effort. Amen. And listen to what he says. Then he said unto them, then he said unto them, the harvest is truly, the harvest truly is great or it's plentiful. But the problem is, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. In other words, the problem is that there's not, a, that the, the problem is not that there's not people looking for Jesus. The problem is there's not enough people telling people about Jesus. There are, well, you remember, uh, I think it was last, a Sunday or uh, last Thursday, I said there's a, there are 350,000 people in Orlando who've never set foot into this church. Somebody say the harvest is plentiful. Somebody say the harvest is plentiful. Okay, the problem is that there's not enough people willing to go out and tell people about Jesus and that he can give them the hope that they're looking for. People are looking for hope. And you have the answer. Look at your neighbor and say, you have the answer. Now, here's something that's very great about the scripture that, that I want to horn in on just for tonight that really blessed me. Luke 10 and 1 says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. Somebody say, after these things. My question is, what happened before these things? Because after these things, God appoints 70 people. Let's look at what happened before these things. Let's go to Luke, the ninth chapter, starting at the 57th verse. This is good. Don't miss this revelation. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes, and dens, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Jesus was saying, if you follow me, there are times that it is not going to be profitable for you. He says, if you follow me, sometimes you're not going to be able to have your rent paid. Sometimes if you follow me, sometimes money is not going to flow coming to me now. 
There are times that you have to make sacrifices when you follow Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? They came to Jesus and said, Jesus, we want to follow you. He says, if you want to follow me, sometimes you're going to have difficult moments in your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, you're going to have some difficult moments in your life. He says, because, he says, the son of man is a fox. Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the son of man have no place to lay his head. He said to another person, come follow me. And the man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. He said, Jesus says, I need you to follow me. And the man says, hey, I got something else I got to do. I'll get to church later, but I need to do what I need to do first. I want you to follow this because I, I want you to hear this tonight. I want you to hear this. The man says, I'll follow you, Jesus, but let me handle my business first. How many people would be here tonight but they had something else they wanted to do first. They, they, they said, he says, he says, I will follow you, but let me go and turn home and bury my father. Listen to what he says. He says to another person, come and follow me. And the man agreed and said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritual dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Look at your neighbor and say, our duty is to preach about the kingdom. First, I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. Some of us do everything else that we want to do in life and put God on the back burner. In other words, the man was saying, I'll get there after I do the things that I need to do because I'm busy right now. And look at your neighbor and ask him, are you too busy to follow Jesus? Or ask the next neighbor, say, are you too busy? To preach the kingdom. Now, are you too busy? Is the reason that we don't see a flux of people coming in is because we're busy about our own business and not busy about the Father's business, the kingdom business. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. Where am I? Verse 60. But Jesus told him, let the spiritual dead bury their own dead. He says, your duty. Now, it seems to me that that, that, that that was a good thing for the man to do. His father died or whatever. You know, he was going to go back and spend some time with his, with his family. Jesus says, listen, I only got three years to do what I got to do. I ain't got time. You know, what, the urgency is here. Your, your father is okay. I need you to be about your father's business. Look at your neighbor and say, whatever you're going through is going to be okay. Handle your daddy's business. Do you understand? I, I'm not making enough money. Handle your daddy's business first. Do what he's called you to do first. Let, let, me, let me go on. Let me go on. Another said, 61, another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. I cannot tell you, and I'm just, just throwing this out. Don't get mad. It's in the book. I cannot tell you the people that I have evangelized in the streets to say, hey, man, I'll be there Sunday, but I can't come to Sunday because I got family in town. Wow. Don't that sound like? You know, no, no, I'll be there, but let me take care of my family. No, no, God says, listen, take care of God's business. Your family is going to be okay. Now, what he's talking about, he's not saying, yeah, I don't want to be literal here, that, that, that you can't spend time with family. That's not what he's saying. What he is saying is when everything else comes before him. Y'all ain't saying much in the name, man. I, I preach, Pastor. 
preach faster. You know, if I come, if I come and call on Saturday, do you have the laundry you have to do? Do you have, I say, hey, we're going to do an evangelism outreach on this upcoming Saturday. I got to go grocery shopping. I got to clean the yard. I got to do, all the stuff comes up of what you have to do when your responsibility is to preach the gospel and the kingdom to those that are lost. Amen. Amen. This is what God's called us to do. You want to know why it's hopeless? I, you know what? Let me tell you something. I said this to myself the other day. I was driving down the street, and I saw a Jehovah Witness temple. I'm, I'm not picking on any religion or whatever. And people were driving in. It, the parking lot was packed. I don't know one Jehovah Witness um, um, radio program. I don't know one Jehovah Witness television program. I, I don't know one Jehovah Witness anything but one thing they do. Come on. They do what? They get out and evangelize. If they get out and evangelize and fill their temple to lock people into condemnation. What more can we do to free people from condemnation? The reason we're not for is because we're too busy doing everything we want to do and not doing our Father's business. Can't get people to evangelize, but we can get them to come for a picnic. Because our priorities, we're too busy. Jesus says, where are you? He says, I, I can't come because I'm busy doing family stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not what they've said, it's just excuses. What excuse would you give if I told you I want everybody here on Saturday? Don't say it out. Don't say it out. I, I've asked... Everybody pick up 10 cards. I'm preaching tonight. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Say amen. Say ouch. Keep looking straight. Keep looking straight. I've asked everybody to take 10 cards a week to pass them out. What excuse do you have that you haven't done that yet? Too busy on my job. I, I, I don't have to. Yeah, that's what the people are having, a bunch of excuses. I, I'm going somewhere. I am almost through. Thank you, baby. I knew only one person would say that. <laughs> All right. All right. He says, for 61, another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. 62, but Jesus told him, anyone who put his hand to the plow and then look back is not fit for the kingdom. Verse Luke 10 and 1. After these things, after what things? After he asked who going to come, everybody that didn't have time left, and none of those were chosen by God. What am I trying to tell you? If you don't have time for God, you can't get the blessings of God because you ain't around to be chosen by God. You're not around to get the blessings and the, and, and the things that God has for you because you're too busy doing other stuff. Look what it says. Luke 10, 1. After these things. After what things? After the conversation he had to say, who wants to follow me? He was only able to pick 70 because the rest of them had Something else to do. You want to be used by God? You got to be available to God. You want to be used by God? You got to make yourself available. You got to be here to be used by God. You got to put him first in some things in your life. I do understand time things come up in your life, but you haven't been out to evangelize one time. You haven't passed it. We've had the cards for three weeks now. You haven't passed the first ten out? I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm helping you. Challenging you. Amen. Thank you for that. I'm challenging you. Are you too busy? But yet and still, we need, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Well, where are you? 
You got to make yourself, look at your neighbor and say, you got to make yourself available. If you're going to be used by God, you got to become available. He cho- Watch this. He chose the people that were available. He used the people that were available. If you want to be used by God, you got to be available. You can't have everything else in the way of him and expect him to use you when you're not available. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord, help me be available. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, Lord, help me be available. All right, right quick, I'm through. 2 Corinthians 5.11. It says, because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. Others. Look at your neighbor and say, when I understand my responsibility to the Lord, I'm willing to work hard for him. How many of you all are willing to work hard for him? See, see, that's why he said at the beginning, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but those that's going to work in the kingdom, it's work. You got to make yourself available. Because we understand what he's done, because we understand who he is, because we understand the grace message, we understand it's our fearful responsibility to work hard for the Lord to persuade others that there is hope. So I would hope for the next 90 days that you stop by the table, pick up your 10 cards, and that you make yourself available so that God can use you. Instead of you saying, I would have done it, but I was, got tied up. I, I would have done it, but boy, my job just had me doing all kinds of stuff. I, I would have done it, but excuses, excuses, excuses. Excuses. I want to know, are you available tonight to be used by God? He chooses those who are available.